One important note that I overlooked in doing the examples is that when we're doing pre-stressing, we should generally have the large deflections turned on. Um, in fact, uh, you can see if I would pay attention, there was a warning that came out that said it had pre-stress modal analysis with the large deflections turned off. Um, so that's a uh, general, it's going to better take into account the stress stiffening that way. Um, so I've turned it on. Um, let's rerun it and see how that affects the, uh, the output. And you can see initially 474.03, 656.29 for the two extremes. And now we find uh, 473.99. Um, and 656.37. So in this case, it was a negligible difference. Uh, but we might expect that if we were looking at a uh, um, uh, something that had more stress stiffening, that that effect could be larger. Now, you notice here, um, that looks like a pretty messed up uh, analysis. Um, and that's because it's gone to the true scale. This is one case where you definitely want to um, use uh, Auto scale can be much he more help helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and select the auto scale, and you see that this looks consistent with what we looked at before um, with the disc. Here's again a look at nonlinear displacements with the beam, and we see a modal frequency starting at 16.47 and going up to 111.22 when we do the uh, uh, we have small angle deflections. And if we come up here and we set this to large deflections, um, again we could we can resolve that and see what the uh, what the impact is. So um, we see uh, again in this case it didn't have any impact though it has defaulted this to true scale instead of auto scale uh, for the for the deformation magnitudes. So. Not a big role here, and uh, but, but be careful of that when doing your pre-stress analysis that you may need to put large deflection analysis on.